We're here to meet with Fabrice Grinda, the famed angel investor for a 42 questions. Originally, um, I'm French. I came to the Ezra College, I went to Princeton, I finished off my class, and I worked for McKinsey and Company. And when I was 21, so from, uh, I guess, 96 to 98, and then when I was 23, I started becoming a tech entrepreneur. And so I've been building, especially marketplaces, so I built an eBay type site for Europe and then for Latin America. There was a company called Auckland and Deremate in Latin America. Deremate is now called Mercado Libre, which is the leading uh, auction site in Latin America. It's publicly traded on NASDAQ. Um, in 01, I came back to New York and I built a big mobile content company called Zingy. Those were interesting times because it went from, I guess, in 2001, the bubble had burst and uh, all the BDC companies had gone under, all the telco companies had gone under, no VCs were investing. And so yeah. I ended up investing every last penny I had. I like missed payroll 27 times. I lived in New York. And You're kidding. I lived in New York Wait. at $2 a day for two years. Oh my God. What uh, do you mean you missed payroll 27 times? Like you, you had to delay it by a week or a couple so of what days? So what happened or, is, so I'd invested- Or you'd go months at a time. Both. So first I, I invested, Everything I, every last penny I had in the company, then I borrowed 100,000 of my credit cards, and then of course they didn't want to give me any more money. Uh, so I would fundraise, but like literally 5K here, 10K there. Every time I met someone, I was like, please give me money. And so I'd miss payroll, but then someone would give me 10K, and boom, I'd make payroll. And so <laughs> I ended up raising 1.4 million in like 5K increments. Wow. Um, and so in the process- This is what it takes for a scrappy entrepreneur <laughs> to get you know, there, there was no alternative. No options. Oh, and, and I couldn't afford any. I couldn't even afford coffee. So I lived in the office. We had a shower in the office. I slept on the couch. Uh, I couldn't even afford, afford. The only food I could actually afford was ramen noodles. I think I lost like 30 oh, pounds. I was on the ramen noodle diet back in 1986. <laughs> you get an egg, you mix it in with a ramen noodle so you can live on 50 cents a day. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> um, a bit more than, and I ate more than one. So, uh, <laughs> oh, you could, yeah, yeah, more, yeah, it's two dollars a day, whatever. Or two dollars a day, but the, uh, but then there was a point in time where I, where I missed payroll four and a half months in a row. Yeah, uh, and so we went from twenty-seven employees to seven because when you stop paying people, they stop showing up for work. Isn't for that reason. weird? It's very odd. So uh, I, it's amazing you got seven people to go yeah. alongside with you. I mean, they saw the possibilities in the business. And there we, was traction, yeah, but they, but you were still losing money. So that's the way I ultimately build the business, the old fashioned way with profits. So yeah. we became cash flow profitable August 15, 2003, and cash flow profitable was more important than EBITDA profitable. You remember the very day. Oh yeah, because the check arrived, we were profitable, um, made payroll, paid back all the back pay. And from there on, we built the company. So the company went from a million in revenues in 02, five in 03, 15, 04, 200 in 05. Wow. Um, and Market having, ship. yeah, it, it did really well. And having been burned for the last, and this one time was very profitable, been burned the last time I sold it, this time a bit early, but better too early than too late, and in cash, for 80 million in uh, the summer of 04. I stayed on a CEO for, for 18 months, and then in 06, decided to go build OLX, which is basically a mobile, better version of a Craigslist for the rest of the world. So spam-free, scam-free, pre-moderated, no murders, no, no personals, no prostitution. Yep. It, it's really a platform for people to find jobs, real estate, buy and sell things. And in many countries around the world, it's by far the largest buying and selling platform. Like Russia, Ukraine, Poland, the UAE, India, Pakistan. In GMV, it's- oh, in gross the, merchandise. It, oh, it's, oh, it's in the hundreds of billions because people are buying and selling yeah. cars and yeah. houses, et cetera. But in revenues, it's in the hundreds of millions. It's, okay. it's very profitable very, in the countries profitable. where it's dominant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, profitable in the countries where it's dominant. Maybe to give you a sense of scale, it's 3,000 employees. It's probably 300 million uniques a month. Wow. So it's one of the largest sites in the world. Um, and I ran that from 2006 uh, to 2013. So in 2013, um, when I sold it to Nasdaq, or actually I sold it in 2010, but I stayed on a CEO for three years, I, I started thinking through you know, what I wanted to do next. And throughout my entire life, all the time as an entrepreneur, because I was a public-facing, consumer-facing CEO, yeah. young entrepreneurs were asking for money, they were asking for advice, yeah. and so I started investing. Yeah. And that kind of took a life of its own, and so by 2013, even though I was CEO full-time of OLX, I already had maybe 100 angel investments. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, you know, I like investing, I like operating. And that's FDA Labs today has, yeah. has, has, has spun out of that. You have also have a, a few other partners. One of my r earliest partners who, who helped build Deremate, we started uh, co-investing together uh, and did 100% of our co-investments together. And so in 2013, we were both at like inflection points. We were thinking of what to do next. Yeah. You know, FJ is Fabrice José. We decided to partner 
and basically build what FJ Labs is today.